continue in Nappi's footsteps and teaching and with his language and you know I think I look at these young people and, and they're our future and I, I, I want to keep on in the footsteps of Nappi hopefully maybe who knows maybe I'll get my own spin-off from Wonder Woman that'd be great I think, I think if I was if I was to put the world that, that's what it would be it would be um, Um, so, you know, it's, it, it was a big deal for a lot of us who saw the film, or even before it was coming out and seeing the previews. I remember, like, that moment of just seeing a film. I was like, was that an Indian face? <laughs> you know? And it's that moment, right, in, in the previews. Um, and then went to see the movie, and, um, and yeah, you know, Wonder Woman is a, is a comic book hero. It's larger than life. Uh, but then to see a uh, native person there, um, also in this character that is somewhat larger than life, but also um, real, like somebody I could recognize as real, um, as like, oh, that's like, that's a real Indian person. It's not the caricature person that we're accustomed to, the stereotype or the, the, the Tonto stereotype of like the, you know, the one who's gonna like say you and track you out into the into the wilderness and make sure you get out alive right or, or sacrifice their life for you <laughs> um, and so it was really good as a, a consumer of movies and comics and, and to see that um, and what was it like for you to be in that space and um, be in this larger than life story of Wonder Woman but also that you were key in helping you know helping save the world in that moment right <laughs> First, you know what, I, I was so scared doing this film. I thought, okay, you know, my audience is, is, is you people, the, my, my indigenous people, right? And I didn't want to cross that line to be that stereotypical Indian in the movie, to be that Hollywood image of, of you know, that Hollywood Indian, right? And I was like, oh man, oh my, you know, I'm gonna be called chief for the rest of my life, oh no. <laughs> You know, I, it was a question. That was the first thing actually the, the producer asked me. She was, "What, what are your I, what are your thoughts of of stereotypes, Native Americans, and the stereotypes of Native Americans in, in movies?" And I said, "You know what? We're not all medicine men. We're not all you know. They have the big mystical thing about Indians, and you know, we're not all chiefs." And and she was okay. She was. Um, and I didn't know what my character's name was going to be yet, so that's what she told me. She said, how do you feel about being called Chief? I said, those are fighting words. <laughs> and she, she said, you know what, she was based on comic book characters, I can't change her name, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself in your own language. So that was the trade-off of, of, of that, you know, and... and it was, you know, people are, are asking me, how did I kick down the doors in Hollywood and do what I did? You know what, I didn't. It was, it was Patty Jenkins, it was that communication, that respect back and forth. You know, they, in the beginning they wanted me to speak broken English. I was like, why? I was like, it's, it's World War I. We were already, like, at a, you know, in being, being from Canada, it's, it was already 30 years that we were in, in residential schools. We knew how to read, we knew how to write. Why, why would I speak broken English? And, and Patty was like, yeah, I'm So, you know, and it was just those little things that, you know, I don't know. One of the things that I didn't really care for was the smoke signals. I think a lot, of, it's kind of, you know, and I did bring it up, I did try to change it. And, you know, when it came down to it, we couldn't find another way to communicate that message of, of where they were. And you know what? It was, it was a sign of the times. They didn't have phones. They didn't have, you know, so that was, you know, I think that might, 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 you know, might have happened, smoke signals. You know, it was something that, you know, you know even, even being called chief, you know, at that time, the, the, the research that I did, I didn't go back and research comic books. You know what I did? I went and I researched. Native American veterans in World War I. You know, and I found so many. 
But what I didn't find was first-hand knowledge. It was always somebody else's perspective of what happened to these Indians in war, right? And it, except one, I found one, one veteran, and he was, happens to be from my tribe. His name was Mike Mountain Horse. <clears throat> so he enlisted after his brother died in the war. And, and he had so many, you know, he was, he was that guy that snuck up in broad daylight. And he took out those German 77s that were wiping everybody out, right? So it let all the boys move. It was more than one occasion that he did this. And one of the, one of the stories as well was he got detached from his battalion and he ended up coming back with nine prisoners of war. And so it was just all the stuff that I, the research that I did, I was like, wow, you know, this is very powerful. It's, our people were fighting beside the men that their grandfathers and fathers fought against. You know, fighting for a country that, I mean, we weren't even citizens. We couldn't even vote. You know, we all came back from war and we didn't get no, you know, what, what veterans get, you know what I mean? We just got let loose and that was it, right? Go back to the res. I mean, that's it's sad. And um, but anyways, I, you know, for me, that was a real hero, you know, to, to sit and fight beside the people that your fathers fought against, to, you know, for your, you know, again, it's for your family, for your country, for your way of life. And so I think that, you know, that hit me hard. It was great that I, I'm glad I found those stories that, and I, I hope to create more awareness of our indigenous veterans. We've done so much for this country in Canada and here. It's, it's, and, and, and it's not acknowledged. So. Um. Um, so, um, do you, have you, uh, so this is the second now, the in, second Indigenous Comic-Con. Um, I hear some rumors there might be one cruising through Canada sometime in the future. <laughs> um, you know what, it, you know, we have a lot of people who, you know, traverse, you know, between uh, countries, right? Because we had nations that had relationships with each other. Now we have these sort of country borders. Um, but you're much further south here in um, being in New Mexico, much closer to another border. What would you want people to see and experience, um, you know, coming to your, your home community? I, I don't know where it's going to be in Canada yet, but what would you want people to know um, as indigenous actor, artists, um, that, you know, a group of folks who would be coming from like a Comic Con like this, what would, what would you hope would be highlighted and shown from your community? You know, when I fly back home, it's, it's a feeling of, you know, I've, like I said, I've lived in Paris, I've lived in London, I live in California now, and you know what I think, when I go home, I have a feeling, it's like, wow, this is the most beautiful place on earth. It's um, like the mountains, the scenery, the, you know, it's, it's not as populated as, as here in America, and it's very, um, Wild and right. Did, 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 did anybody watch the movie Revenant? Did you guys see the landscape there? So that's where I'm from. And um, I think just, yeah, that connection to, to nature. I think it's the most beautiful place in the world. In the world. I think um, that's what I would like to share. Just to, to, to see the beauty of, of uh, Canada. Um, I'll stand for questions from the audience. Anybody has a question you want to share? Ask Eugene. It's now Ask Eugene Hour. No, just kidding. <laughs> I can just be loud. If you were to move into producing someday, is there a particular story or a type of story that you would really like to tell? There's so many different, yeah. I've got so many stories in my head, but you know what, I'm, I'm coming across some new material, some, you know, we've all seen the Cowboys and Indian shows, you know? so I, 
it's nice to do some more artistic style of, of television, some postmodern stuff, some, some actually I just got a friend right here, he's all, um, he just finished a production that, that is amazing, that's great, great story, if you guys have a chance to, and you guys get the opportunity to see a trailer called Kills Last, it's, it's something that, it's a great story, it's not your typical cowboy and Indian story, it's, it's a awesome story. It's, it's an old story. It's kind of like, do you remember watching, um, there was uh, Romeo and Juliet, so that's an old story, but they made it new, right? And they, so that's kind of the, the style of this, this Kills Last. It's an old story made into something else. So. Any other questions? Amazing. It was um, Gal, Wonder Woman. She's so down to earth. She's got no ego at all. She was always just a great, great, beautiful woman inside and out. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was, what was tough about filming Wonder Woman was living in London for seven months. It was tough. It was, I was like, I was the only Indian in England.